good evening, everyone. Seven trees from dying on the grounds of Long Beach High School. 
they met for a total of 50 hours. That's a lot of time. 50 hours researching methods to save the trees. Finally deciding to make rain circles with the face of each tree, followed by placing newspaper and mulch donated by Lowe's in Freeport. Thank you, Lowe's. Thanks to the diligent research and planning uh, by Girl Scout 2005, the trees have survived. So thank you very much for that. First, we have Laura Schneck. Schneck. All right. <laughs> Olivia Schner. Wen Posner. Izzy Turbeck. She could make it this evening. Theodora Angelopoulos. Megan Fitzgerald. <laughs> Julian Newman Mitchell. Congratulations. <laughs> Annabelle Giorgio. E. Giorgio. Sorry about that. Giorgio, right? <laughs> Jewel Marks. <laughs> Kira McKay. Caitlin Farney. All right. Well, thank you girls very much. If you don't want to slide down, we'll take a photograph. Slide down, Commissioner. Take roll call and, and then uh, we're going to do the pledge. If you girls want to stay for one second, and then yeah. it would be great if you could meet us. Good evening and welcome to the regular meeting of the Council of the City of Long Beach on Tuesday, January 15th, 2019, at 7 p.m. For the roll call, Councilman Mandel. Present. Councilman Mandel is absent. Councilman Moore. Present. Vice President Diamond. Here. Okay. Uh, President Obama. Here. Let the record indicate the presence of acting. Excuse me. Let the record indicate the presence of acting city manager Michael Tagney and Corporation Council Robert Anastasia. Now we're going to the flag. Would, would Troop 2005 come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Someone want to? Someone want to come up to the microphone?
you very much, girls. Thank you to the troop leaders for all you do for the community. Uh, we're just going to take a, a break for one second and, and let the troop um, leave and not feel like they're disturbing the meeting. Seeing no hands, 
Uh, next item. Item 2 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to return a retainage payment to World Work Ahead Corporation. Uh, normally, when we have uh, authorized work, we require a bond or we do retainage. So, in this case, we didn't require a bond, but we kept some of the funds, with, uh, withheld some of the funds until the completion of the project that we were satisfied to sign off on and this is the remainder. Which project? John? Sorry, Commissioner Miranda. This was for a painting that we completed last year uh, with uh, Road Work Ahead that included uh, West Beach Street from Tennessee to Nevada, uh, from East Chester Street from Neptune to Curly, uh, East Broadway from Maple to uh, Pacific, and also the parking lot at uh, Riverside and Pine or the MLK Center parking field. This was all the way work that was done last year's contract and completed. Any questions from the council for the commissioner? Any comments from the public? Yes, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. I'm just curious about this because it's not the power. I guess it's normally, or I'm used to it being done. The 5% was basically held as, you know, just to make sure that everything was done correctly. Is that correct? Because I, I don't understand. No, that's exactly, that's exactly it. But then why do you need a resolution to pay it? I mean, we used to hold money all the time for contracts. And, then when the contract was done, we released the money. It, and this is the first time I've actually seen a resolution to pay that money. It's, just, it's, it's over the, the city manager's twenty thousand dollar threshold. So every time you hold money, it's not every time. It has to it has to surpass the threshold. Okay, but that's the way because I've never seen this before with retained funding. Yeah, it's, uh, I've seen it before. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks. Any other comments from the public? Okay, seeing no hands, I have raised a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a memorandum of understanding which modifies events and extends the collective bargaining agreement excuse me, between the Long Beach Civil Service Employees Association Life Guard Unit and the city of Long Beach. All right, I'm going to take items three and four at the same time since they're so I'll, I'll be for also. Sure. Okay, and item four is resolution authorizing the city manager to enter to a memorandum of understanding which modifies, amends, and extends the collective bargaining agreement between the Long Beach Civil Service Employees Association, Lifeguard Officers Union, and the City of Long Beach. All right, so the important thing to remember first and foremost is that there are two collective bargaining agreements up for adoption tonight. The first is uh, the Lifeguards <coughs> Officers Union, and the other is the Lifeguards Union. The city made identical demands in both sets of negotiations. And by the way, I should mention that both contracts expired in June of uh, 2018. The demands the city made related to the language of the grievance procedure, and uh, we were trying to also, number two, we were trying to set a standard beach park season uh, because of operational concerns that have developed gradually over time. Uh, with respect to grievances, the most important change the city needed in that contract was that we needed the statute of limitations. Um, so now we have that. Part previously, the lifeguard unions could theoretically wait on the grievance and sit on it for really as long as they wanted to for a period of years um, before having to file. And now we have a 10-day filing period. So that was the most important change in the grievance procedure. But also we set forth a comprehensive detailed procedure which, um, which both unions have now agreed to follow. The idea of which being that the city will now be in position to, uh, to offer a meaningful defense when, uh, when unions file these grievances, because previously they could just, the unions could just identify a section of the contract that was allegedly violated, and uh, we can wind up in arbitration on a grievance that we knew nothing about. And so this gives the opportunity for the city to, like I said, offer a meaningful defense, and to, on occasion, submit motions to dismiss. Uh, with respect to the beach park season, what we tried to do was uh, set a uniform standard of 49 days because sometimes what we find is that lifeguards go back to school early and it results in overtime and operational issues. Um, 
I guess the key component of these negotiations is as follows. The two different unions chose to handle our demands differently. The officers union chose to adopt our proposed changes in full, and the lifeguard union did not ultimately choose to support the 49 uh, standard, the 49 day standard beach, beach park season um, length. So what we in turn said to the lifeguard union is that this contract is no longer worth the 2% raises that the officers union uh, was awarded, and, uh, and they agreed to instead take 1% raises. So the reason why that's significant is because this is a perfect example of something you don't see come up very often, in, in, at least in, in terms of council meetings. But it, it's a demonstration, it's an illustration of the principle of contractual consideration and how it works. This offers insight and, and demonstrates that um, the city always gets something in exchange for what it's given up. And, and also it further, uh, it further demonstrates the importance of not divorcing the benefit from a concession. Additionally, there were some other minor changes made, specifically the rope crew, which works in June and June, September, during the week. They were given raises from $11 an hour to $14 an hour, and there were other minor changes as well. All right. uh, we're all really proud and happy uh, of the work that our lifeguards do and keeping us safe in the summertime and especially after the season. So we thank you for that. And really happy that we're able to come to agreement uh, for both the officers and the lifeguards. Um, are there any questions from the council? Yes, I have a couple of questions. Sure. Um, first, obviously, one of the benefits of being a part of the union is being able to have voice. And so I do have a question with respect to the grievance process. Um, you spoke earlier about the fact that now um, those individuals would have at least 10 days to file. I think that's a great step forward. But when you look at um, the way it's outlined, those individuals will have to file. They have 10 days to file, but on the opposite side, um, they will, you have 15 days that you can answer the actual complaint. Correct. Can you just speak to the rationale? What's the reason behind that? Well, you're starting to set, set a uniform procedure that allows, again, the city. It, the way it works in practice is that these unions, they know what their grievance before they file, but we may not know anything about that grievance until the filing date. That's why we gave ourselves a little more time to investigate. And so then, the purpose you know, of the is just the grievance, meaning either choose to settle it or leave it. Okay. All right, and then my second question would be in terms of the previous contract. Um, it was a three-member panel, and now that's been reduced to one. Can you just speak to the rationale for changing that? Sure. Um, the three-person panel mimicked what, what is known as an interest arbitration panel. Uh, that's a form of arbitration that, uh, that the police and the fire department are, are recipients of. And basically, the way it works is that you have a three-member panel where you have an assigned arbitrator selected off of a list, usually from her. Um, also, you have an employee representative on that list and an employer representative. This was simply designed to streamline the process. You know, an interest arbitration makes sense because the employee or employer representative can, can generate consent, um, which can be very important in cases such as those. But for routine grievances, it was just an unnecessarily, uh, uh, unnecessary hurdle and uh, an impediment to efficiency, and that's why it was eliminated. Okay, my last question would then be, you spoke earlier about uh, a lot of our younger uh, lifeguards and the fact that they do have to go to school at the end of that season and we're grateful for the service that they give. Um, and that brings up another question and that is about seniority. Because obviously you have senior guards who are out there. Um, so my question would be the promotion process. Out, as outlined in the present contract, um, they still have an evaluation process but it also speaks to this clause about um, the fact that in some cases with respect to promotion, that um, this is granted based on the discretion of the city manager and or the chief. So my question is, are we using the evaluations in any way for the promotion? Because obviously we want to make sure that we promote as many people as possible. How is the promotion, how is it being used? And then also what was the rationale behind not allowing for, I guess, a clarification in the language with respect to this, this discretionary clause. Why is it, Why haven't we outlined that and put that in writing to create more of a checks and balances in that situation? <laughs> that's, it's a fair point on both, on both, by the way. And that's something that we're working on. Um, we've been able to, to, to gain more ground with the officers union, frankly, than the lifeguards to date. That doesn't mean it won't happen in the future. Um, to the extent the evaluations are being utilized, that's something that um, 
it's been sporadic, I'd say, and something that we need to work on uh, going forward in the future. But in terms of discretion, one of the things that the officers in union agree to do is to eliminate the chief's discretion, um, which helps the city operationally in terms of generating a central point of control over the unit. Um, the lifeguards is, is a bit more amorphous, and that's why I'm, I'm saying it's something that we do admittedly have to work on moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Anyone else? Uh, yes, a couple of questions. Um, chapter uh, the 7A of the, of the contract uh, guarantees, well, all contracts guarantees so many employees 48 to 50 hour work weeks. What, what's the normal start time on a work week? So beach calls at 6, what's the normal start time for the work week? I think it's, no, not eight, it's, eight, eight, it's between 8 and 9. It's, it starts at 8.40 for the regular, regular guards, and it starts at 8.30 for the officers. The officers okay. work a 10-hour day, and the regular guards work a, was it, nine, yeah. nine and a half hour day. Thank you. So, okay, so because my question is, is do they have to work more than five days to hit their 50 hours if, if they're not an officer. Or just the You know, I think so, but I guess it depends on what their, it depends on their work week also. All right, let me, yeah. let me tell you what I'm trying to figure out here. There's a conflict between okay. seven A and seven B. Okay. But seven A pays time and a half they go after six, but if the only way to get their guaranteed minimum is to go after six, I'm just trying to figure out how those two jobs. That's correct. <clears throat> It's correct in that the day goes to six. If it's forced overtime, then that's when they get time and a half. There's only one shift. To keep it simple that way, you're being on one shift. If you if you have multiple shifts, then you have to hire at least forty percent more life. No, no, I'm not asking that much. But what I'm saying is, is they hit fifty hours. That's the officer. Do they have? To, no, no, no. It's it's in the, uh, the headquarters personnel. We guarantee fifty right. hours. Because they're they're reporting the headquarters. Would you like to come up? No, just to clarify. Yeah, no, we really appreciate it. Okay. I know you've been on the on the chair for a long, long time. Just come up to the microphone and just state your name and address for the record. Uh, John Spoon Uh Well, with this question. What I'm trying to figure out is if they guarantee 50 hours. Will that force them to work past six to hit their minimum? Or can they do it by the time the beach closes each day at six? No, they don't go over 50. That's what I was just trying to answer. Yeah. But we, we all go over 50, like everybody goes over wherever. Yeah. But uh, because the personnel at headquarters has to get up there, get there early to get all the equipment out, get everything set up for when the guards arrive. And that's why they did it now. Yeah, that's why I was just trying to clarify because this, the way it's worded, they could be, I, I think it was perceived they could be a conflict between paragraph 7, 8, and 7, 8. That's what I was just trying to get clarity. Okay. Anything else? No. Is there something you want to add to the contract? I think you cleared it up. If you have any further questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Okay. Anything else from the council? Any comments from the public? Anyone? Sure, come on up. <coughs> Please state your name and address for the record. Ray Elmer, uh, 560 West Broadway. I just want to say uh, I think the uh, Long Beach uh, Lifeguard Patrol is uh, one of the best um, lifeguard organizations uh, in the world. Uh, and, it, and it's not just because they're, they're great swimmers or, or they can run or they know what a rip current is or they can, uh, they can do CPR. But in the Chief's Log each year, uh, they do over 100,000 preventative actions. And that's what makes them the best in the world. 
they can recognize a beach, look at three beaches, and know the bottom, they're, they're, and know where the rip currents are. And as part of this collective bargaining agreement, uh, we have a work crew that was increased from 11 to 14 dollars an hour. That's almost a dollar below the minimum wage in, that's going to be in New York City. But with that being said, is that crew is on when the lifeguards are not on duty. And that crew goes out on rescues. And what we have here is we also have a, a late shift crew that works from 6 to 8 p.m. They're on call. But the water experts know that if a person is in trouble, you have two minutes to get to them. Two. Two. And in order to guard 4.2 miles, you have to see the victim to, rec to rescue the victim. Now, we have lifeguards who would make $14 an hour. We have the manpower and the women power. We have the equipment of four-wheel uh, quads. We have surfboards. We have radios. If we only had eight of them patrolling during off hours from during the months of June, July, August and September, we could prevent off-season drownings by 90%. And I only bring this up now because we're talking about these are the lifeguards. We, we have the equipment, we have the knowledge, we can cover the beaches. But right now, when the lifeguards are not on duty, the jurisdiction is under the police department. And we have the best, we have the best police department, we have the best fire department. But the idea of being able to see somebody within two minutes and rescue them, our, our system in off hours, off Thank hours, can, can be, can be per perfected. Yep. And if you look at it and you just put lifeguards please, on please those quads, lifeguards on those quads. Please wrap it up, Mr. Elmer, your yes, time has expired please. and it's also not related to the, the topic at hand. Well, so well it is, it's related, it it's, it's, it's related to the topic as far as ocean safety. I know, but we're specifically talking about the CBA and we have to try and stick to the uh, agenda items. So if you, I, we really appreciate your comments. There's not one person here that doesn't love our lifeguards. There's not one person here that hasn't seen them make numerous rescues. Uh, all, all, at all times. So your point is well taken, and I, well, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Is there anyone from the, the CSEA that would like to come up and speak in regards to the contract negotiation? Yes, come on up. I didn't plan on coming up here, but you know, I cut my voice short, so I'm going to take it together. Please stick to the agenda item, okay? About the contract. Thank you. But, um, okay, so basically, you have three minutes, right? <laughs> okay, Philip Aquila. Currently homeless. Uh, I basically have been lifeguarding here in Long Beach since I was just out of high school. So I started when I was 17. Best opportunity, great experience. Got to work with NCAA athletes, all D1, great swimmers, you know. So I had a choice though. I had to choose whether I wanted to pursue baseball. Please stick to the agenda. And okay. work on the, the contract negotiations. We need to stick to the agenda, I'm sir. So basically, for the people that you said, what she was talking about on the agenda, of uh, how there's no uh, opportunities above. You know what I mean? Once there's certain people above us, there's no going up. It's very low ceiling. And I agree with that. <coughs> I've personally been lifeguarding for like nine, ten years, and two, I worked at New Plaza Beach Club before I worked in Long Beach Lifeguard. So I got to look at a, a little bit from the outside. And I think Long Beach Lifeguard is better than just like Ray was, Ms. Elmer was talking about. It's great. But there are a lot of people in power who are never going to give me an opportunity. I gave up my dream of playing baseball. And I moved to California, to San Diego, and all that. And I tried out for a team. They, they cut me. I wasn't prepared because I was busy working here. I'm making, I made $15 when I started at 17. Now, nine years later, I'm making $18. I'm 225 pounds, though. 
You know what I mean? Like, I'm 50 pounds heavier, and I don't see myself getting a promotion unless something is done. And, you know, there's two different unions now, you're saying. I, we don't even know that. Nobody tells us anything, and I, this is my livelihood. This is what I made my life. I have uh, I understand. problems with my feet from running on the sand after Sandy and the sewer waters that was flooded all over the town because the sewers were dri clogged with sand. So my feet are still deteriorated from that. But uh, this is really my livelihood, and I want you guys to know I appreciate any efforts you guys to make to make it so the lifeguards who are out there swimming those two, that 200 yards, that train, 225 pounds. I gotta train my A off to get that done. And all I'm saying is, before the three minutes is up, is yes, it needs to be monitored, and the people all above me, even though they're like my representative, all those people, they're not the ones swimming after your loved one. I am. And I need money to eat. I need protein, I need carbs, I need pasta, I need all that. I'm home. So please help me out, okay? Good luck, people. Six, five, seven, that to me was my address is getting lifted right now, and everything is a distrosity in my family. So I'm sorry for coming at you foul, but I really need you guys to monitor this. And $18 an hour. I mean, you guys just raised the taxes through the roof. I just got back from California. I read all the papers and all that. Thank and, you. And you know, it all goes away when the sun comes out, and you guys just run to your office. So I'm asking you to pay attention to this right for the grace of God. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone can see it the end? to speak? Yeah, we got one. We got eight. The president doesn't like you. Speak to the contract negotiations. Thank you. Please, the name and address. Uh, and then we'll Casino, uh, 100 yards what? away. Also, Long Beach High School chemistry and forensics teacher. Um, I just think uh, for, over the past year and a half, um, our unit has gone through a whole slew of negotiations, talking with the acting city manager, um, everyone at City Hall, we even negotiated, spoke with the officers in the officers unit. Um, so the fact that we don't know that there are two units is not true at all. Um, everyone's well aware. We have two units that are very distinct, officers and lifeguards. Uh, what I think, what we offer, we protect the biggest investment in the amount of money that the city makes. Um, every summer, you, your beach hub, people buy beach passes, People go to the beach, they come off the train. We protect the biggest investment that the city gets, or at least the money they return back. Uh, what we think, what we're asking for, I think is very fair. Negotiations, for the most part, were very, um, pretty seamless. And I think moving forward, um, unless anyone has any questions about our contract, anything on the agenda um, to be answered, uh, you can please contact any one of the union officials, which we contact all of our uh, unit members all the time. Um, otherwise, um, you know where to find us between May and June. Um, everyone who goes in the water comes out. That's our job. That's what you pay us to do. Uh, you do your job right. You show up on time. There should be no questions. But thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Go from 60 to 10 is not fair. And we have 
employees, lifeguarding, and on rope crew, which are part of the same unit, working for at least five months of the year. So compare that to the CSCA big unit. I mean, yes, they are there all year. But we are also occupying jobs and have issues at times, and they should be able to put a grievance in and have at least 25 days or 30. As far as the promotion, again, the evaluations. In the new grievance procedure, why are we fast-tracking promotions to go to Pearl? When it's in the contract, the senior guards criteria, I don't feel, and I don't think that there is jurisdiction for PERB to oversee that if it does go to PERB. So I'm kind of, I don't know, bewildered on that and confused. Maybe you can speak to that, I don't know. But from what I've heard, and I've spoken to PERB, and they're pretty confused on it themselves. And also, in grievance procedure, going over and above just the promotions of senior guard, it says all promotions basically. So I don't know if that has to do anything with lieutenant promotions, going from senior guard to lieutenant. But again, we're overriding what's written in the contract with the officers when it's stated everything's getting fast track to the program. As far as Thank you. Work. I'll let, I'll let uh, Corporation Council, I guess, DC respond. Sure, just very quickly, I can answer that question with respect to PERV. There's a distinction between going to PERV which typically involves an, an alleged improper labor practice and um, and using a per assigned arbitrator. They made, made a panel of arbitrators um, from which we selected and we had a private contract with. So we don't go to per with respect, used to be the, the grievance procedure. And now in the matter you're suggesting, we simply pick off of, of a list that's maintained by per. And can you, can you just um, tell us what PERB stands for, for those that don't know? Sure, the Public Employment Relations Board. Thank you. Anyone else? No, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Anyone else from the CSCA care to speak on the uh, contract negotiations? Sure, come on up, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, I'm senior. Mortgage. Mortgage. Evaluation procedure needs to be in. It can't be up in the air. It needs to be in this contract. And I think you guys should take it with for now and really talk it out. You said it yourself, Mr. Arcadius. It's up in the air. You can't have anything like that up in the air. It's extremely important. These guys need a procedure, some, something, to get them to lieutenant one day or senior guard. If it's up in the air, what does it mean? Negotiate. Go back to the table. Do the right thing. I'm saying table it until you get it together. Thank you. Thank you. This, this comes before us that the negotiation was agreed upon by both parties. Anyone else here to speak? Nope. Seeing no, no hands. Thanks, Diane. Sorry, I didn't see you. Come on up, sir. Can you manage us for the record? Where was the Long Beach? Um, I guess I'm a little confused. I negotiated with the New York State Life Guards for many, many years. And um, my understanding was this was the members had voted on this, or was it just the negotiating board that determined this? The members ratified. The members did ratify. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Nothing you can say about that. But I do have a question about the 50 hours. They worked 50 hours. I remember both my kids were, uh, all three of my kids were lifeguards, and they worked more than 40 hours. How come they don't get overtime? I nothing. No, I'm not able to answer that question. I can answer that question. It's a collective bargaining agreement that overtime is compensated at straight time unless there's an emergency. So if it's your regularly scheduled hours, your mandatory minimum, you don't you don't get overtime at time and a half. You get overtime at straight time. But I thought New York State law do not allow that. And I can believe this there all done by a, a seasonal recreational exception. Okay, the, but, the, but the seasonal, I mean, I looked into that. The seasonal recreation exception only applies to recreational facilities. It doesn't apply to a municipality. 
it does, that's the one that does one with the actual enterprise. That's the terminology they use, but we've researched this question before. I've spoken with the United States Department of Labor about it, actually, they consider the feature to be a separate enterprise for purposes of this section. Of okay, the FSA. I researched it and it wasn't because it was uh, because they were municipal employees. Hey, listen, you couldn't afford to run the beach any other way. <coughs> you know, I understand that. And I would love to see, uh, you know, with uh, someone spoke about having lifeguards more of a presence after hours up and advocating that for years. It's a black mark on Long Beach every time we have an act hour drowning. And it's so inexpensive to get, you know, an additional crew after hours. But at some point, I think that should be looked at that over time because I think that could come back and bite us. Sure. Like, you know. All right. Thank you. Anybody else care to speak on the contract ratification uh, for both units of the lifeguards? No? Seeing no hands? Next item. And finally, a resolution authorizing the publication to hear, uh, excuse me, refunding bond ordinance on the City of Long Beach, New York, authorizing a refunding of all or a portion of certain outstanding serial bonds of said city, starting with uh, starting the plan of refunding, appropriating the issuance of $12,200,000 refunding bonds of said city or so much thereof as may be necessary to finance said appropriation in making certain determinations or relative thereto. This item is a publication only and will be held February 5th at 7 p.m. On to the voting. Item 1 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to amend the agreement for architectural and engineering design services for the city of Long Beach Bulkhead and North Shore projects and to amend the budget. There's going to be an option for this item. Um, yes. 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 And two is a resolution authorizing the city manager to return a retainage payment to Road Work Ahead Corporate. Um,
I echo my fellow council members. Uh, there's no secret that our community loves our lifeguards and how invaluable you are to our community. So um, for my family and for everyone, for the, for the rest of the residents that can't be here, we thank you and I vote yes. I enforce the resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a memorandum of understanding which modifies, amends, and extends the collective bargaining agreement between the Long Beach Civil Service Employees Association Micro Officers Unit and the City of Long Beach.
and if anyone knows about emergency situations, uh, very often there's a CT scan done first, followed by an MRI. So if you need that, you're going to have to be transported a second time to Oceanside. 13% um, of the patients that go to Equals Joy Hospital over here have to be transported to Oceanside. Um, they, in addition to getting um, 174 million of our FEMA money, um, they got uh, 20 million, which they used to rehab the West Wing, which is empty. Okay. In addition, they've gotten 20 million from the merger of Mount Sinai. And uh, when we had the little meeting in the library, um, I told them I knew what their fundraising was and asked them why don't they do some fundraising to give us a real facility that conforms to the 500 year height requirement or hurricane uh, requirement. So um, I, I would like to just remind people um, that this is what we're looking at, which is really like a bunch of nothing. Okay. And I guess Thank you. I will tell you a follow up with that. Oceanside, um, I'm sorry, but South Nassau, and see if they're going to have that night meeting. Um, okay. To see if they're going to have that meeting in the evening. You were able to make the daytime. Yeah. So we're waiting to hear if uh, yeah. they're going to have the morning, when it's going to be. It didn't go well for them. Right. Let's put it that way. I don't think they're in a rush to do the nighttime meeting. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jay Gosler. I'm going to decline, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Gosler. Right now, I'm actually 
Street is not right now. Jen is downstairs. In case anyone comes in. Okay. Um, President Rahm, can you just speak to the other question with respect to the change in security? Um, I'll let the police commissioner respond. Yes, the meetings have been getting very unruly, so I was just uh, concerned and had to be secure. And um, Ms. Trustin, we've reviewed the questions that were asked in the previous meeting and, and all seem to have been answered, um, including uh, Mr. Verona asked a whole bunch um, about the audit that Mr. Tagney, I think that was where the most substantive questions were, and, and uh, Mr. Tagney had answered all those questions. Did he answer them specifically to Mr. Verona? He, he answered the questions that evening. Um, Mr. James Kirkland. Thank you, Mr. Kirkland. Uh, Ms. Allison Blanchett. grant 
that Senator Kaminsky had put forth towards the Financial Restructuring Board. I'm sure there's a process that you have to undertake, benchmarks, and so on and so forth. I don't expect an answer tonight, but if you could give me, the taxpayer, where we are, whatever you can disclose, I think it would be appreciated because that will have an impact on this year's budget, I'm sure. So that's all my questions for tonight, and thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dolores. Um, so in regards to the uh, financial review board that uh, Senator Kaminsky uh, assisted us in pointing us in that direction, um, I believe we're waiting for uh, their recommendations. Um, and then based on their recommendations, you know, they say, we suggest you do this, and if you do, we'll give you $50,000. We suggest you do this, and if you do, we'll give you a million dollars. And it, depending on which of their recommendations you follow, um, uh, you, you receive the grant money. Um, but it's my understanding we haven't received the report yet. No, we have not received the report. We've been going back and forth, uh, just about weekly for the last month, uh, with the uh, individuals from the FRB. They request information, clarification, in response to that. Currently, we have no request outstanding, and they are, they feel they've completed, filled in all the boxes as uh, Mr. Powell said, and they will start writing the report. Unfortunately, uh, we are timed with the um, development of the state budget. So that's going to, we're going to go on the back burner, so we do anticipate the report by March. There is not $5 million grant, there's a, a possibility so that they will fund their recommendation if you accept them. Right, it could be one of them. It's not necessarily grant, it could be one of them. Which, you know. Um, okay, his uh, other question was about the budget we're on target. Yes, I did a budget review the first week of January. And we've spent just about 50% of the budget, which is through the six months or half a year. So we are right on target. Can this information be shared with the public? Yeah, with that, we are. Yeah, yeah we're, uh, there's many departments. Uh, we have, we're just about 50% when we get the control of this. Just related to that, um, the budget that we have is not going to be It'll be the duty of city manager to, to communicate to the council as soon after the first of each year's practical uh, complete report on the finances and administrative activities of the city for the preceding year. Um, are we going to be getting that? Yes. Because we, we didn't get one last year. I'm just wondering when we might see it this year. My name is one. Okay. And, and then just one other thing, sort of related. Um, so I was nerding out on some of this stuff. Um, it also requires the, uh, uh, the city comptroller to provide monthly statements of the financial condition of the city to the council. Uh, we also haven't been getting those. Can we start getting those? Don't worry about that. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Miranda, can you speak to the uh, lifeguard headquarters and the sewer uh, collapse on Riverside? Thank you. Okay, for the person in life headquarters that probably will not get done this summer, uh, we'll know the bathrooms at Neptune and uh, in New York uh, because the Army Corps project has slowed down a lot. Uh, they will be building the crossovers during the, the course of the winter. We hope those will be in first uh, you know, at Neptune in New York once they're in uh, and we get approval from the state to proceed with the building of bathrooms and move out to bid for them. So likely not going to see them this, this summer, but I would be hopeful that we see them before the following year. Um, as far as the sewer main collapse on Riverside, uh, we had got approval to do a cured in place lining. Uh, when you do a cured in place lining, the first thing you have to do is clean the line out, go in and TV the line. Uh, we started to uh, go in to, to clean the line out and we've experienced several major breaks in the line. Uh, we did replace a short section so that we could try to get the camera in. We got in about 35 feet and we found another major collapse. So presently the Department of Public Works has put together a bid to do uh, open trench cut and replacement. 
there is a 48-inch drain next to this sewer main, which can make it uh, would make it quite expensive. Uh, so we're going to move this outside of the uh, of the drain line. We're going to run a manhole to the uh, to the west, and we're going to run a line parallel to the to the 48-inch drain, so we don't do any damage to the drain pipe. But this should reduce the cost of replacing this. Uh, we do have about four hundred thousand dollars in sewer replacement budget that was approved this year. In addition, we just uh, realized the savings of about $90,000 on the West Market job that we can apply to this. So this job is probably going to be somewhere in the $400,000 to $500,000 range, though. And in terms of the, uh, the lifeguard headquarters, is we're going to just get a trailer again for them this, summer, this season? Yeah, we'll have to do the trailer, trailer okay. routine again this year. So, uh, but uh, we do have a really exciting design on the, uh, the oh, lifeguard okay. headquarters, and I think we've made it a a lot more attractive. So. I know, I know. Thank you. Mr. John McDowell. Good evening. Good evening, all. John McNally, 613 West Walnut Street. Uh, congrats again, Anissa. Uh, I was originally- to see you and your family. Thank you, thank you. Um, I was originally really skeptical about the new format or the re-envisioned or corrected format for a good welfare, but uh, since we seem to be making good on the answering questions, uh, either at the meeting itself or at the subsequent meeting, I think it's a real opportunity to clear the air and relieve some of the frustration that uh, even we on the other side of the podium have had uh, in not getting answers, you know, questions. So if this is a process and mechanism for them, that's great. Along those lines, I'm going to ask for a couple of updates and go through a sort of greatest hits of questions that, to my knowledge, have not been answered to date. So uh, similar to what you just did, I had the financial restructuring board um, on there. You gave an update on that. Could you also give an update on uh, where we are with New York State Controller's audit? Um, also, has anyone looked into the allegations of due time that were repeatedly brought up uh, and whether or not that is legal or not for the exempts? Uh, if so, if yes, not, what's the outcome of that been? Uh, has the administration made a determination on whether or not the questionable payouts were proper or not, uh, and what those limits and percentages were? If they have or haven't, has the council been provided, oh, sorry, um, so what's the outcome of that? Has the council been provided with a copy of Corporation Council ISDC's employment contract as requested by Councilman Benda? Uh, does the council and or Corporation Council acknowledge that the caucus meetings held between 2012 and 2018 where all council members were of the same party were in fact in violation of open meeting laws. Uh, similarly, or as a reaction to that, does the council have any uh, intentions of conducting open working meetings as is common amongst most other elected uh, bodies so that the public is afforded an opportunity to observe its deliberative process. Similarly, if you guys aren't holding such meetings now, uh, I think it helps us get along, move the ball along a little bit better and uh, you know have a little bit more of a mission behind what it seemed to be something of a rudderless direction of the ship this year. Uh, did anyone follow up on the allegations that were made over the last couple of meetings of DOT violations? What was the outcome of that? Uh, do we have an update on the search for a city manager? Um, is the council in agreement to decouple public hearings from votes so we don't have quite the same, quite the same contentious and the board is on spot as I've asked several times? Um, which is one of today's questions. So how many people did actually agree their taxes with the city today? And then a little uh, editorial on my part, the city's uh, social media has sort of fallen all over itself, rightfully so, to say that they won a case against ISTAR. Um, I would love to see Jim Kirkland and others that were involved in the Kirkland proceeding get awarded a citation of some sort uh, for queuing that up and making it possible. <laughs> So we'll try and answer some of that stuff, um, but the one one exception I would have to take is the run of the ship. I think uh, Commissioner Tagney has done an outstanding job this year and has gone over and above. So I think exception to you saying it is a run of the ship. Mr. Ron Paginini. Can I There's just, there was a lot of questions there, so Mr. Pagini, if you want to just sit down and we'll try and answer some of these. Right, the controls oh, work, the controls work is in full swing. Um, they, again, similar to uh, what the state asked, <coughs> sent all the information up to them. 
In addition, uh, as far as due time, I don't know anything about due time. I don't, I've never used due time. I've never approved due time. Uh, as far as the payouts go, we're waiting for the district attorney's office to do an investigation, as well as the county, the state controller. So when we hear back from them and their investigation is closed, what recommendations they make, uh, we'll be going along with that. I've said repeatedly, we've searched uh, the city manager's office and the corporation council's office. Ms. Agnesty sees that part two does, is not in this building. Um, as far as the DOT violations that were alleged at the last meeting, there were some very minor violations. They all, uh, 90, over 90% 90 of them dealt with uh, drivers reporting and not uh, safety of the buses. No buses were taken out of service uh, at, at any time in both the 2011 and the current audit. Um, and as far as the city manager search, uh, there was a company that was made a proposal and there is a questionnaire of the requirements and the council is now working on getting those together. Thank you. And uh, in terms of the open meeting law, um, you said something about 2012 to 2018 violating. It's, it's not a violation if everyone is on the same party. No, it, it is a violation.
All right, let's get to the 12, last one. The out of control boss who only does a small amount of paperwork with his part-time secretary girlfriend, who neither have signed in or out for five years, who do the payroll for the shop, could be charged with theft of service. Thank Easily. You, Mr. No contest. The city has very strict policy. This back is easy. On signing in and signing out. Thank you. The union warned him many times on the issue. Your, stating that if he doesn't sign up, in, he's terminated. Your time he's is up. terminated. One second. I, we we hired two seconds. mechanics. Your time he's is up, sir. All right, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you get back to me on this. Um, we you will said, look into Mr. Rano, you would. I said we will look into it. I did. Hurry and, up. And the one thing I do know is that buses have not failed inspection. They did fail. That, they, they have not. Yes, Mr. Phil Schleps. No. I'm sorry, sir, your time is up, but our buses have not failed inspection. Because your time is up. I'm sorry. Good evening. Good evening, Phil Schleps. Long Beach. Congratulations, Councilwoman Moore. I look forward to reading uh, your book. Thank you. Now, um, the meetings have been getting a lot better uh, since uh, City Council President Alamo had stated what meeting is supposed to uh, the tempo and the uh, abuse. And I think that very helpful. Now, um, Councilman uh, Bendo, I think that the problem is math. There were five council people. That's four and one. Four are Democrat and you are not. And so for the vote, you vote. You have the right to vote. I don't know why we have a problem with the city council uh, manager vote. I blame you. you there's, no, there's no problem, Mr. Schlitz. Okay. Okay, please direct your comments okay. to the whole, the whole body. Thank you. Okay, well, I'm glad it's not a problem. I would like to see the result at the next meeting, so uh, that's one thing. Now, um, I can't agree with her. Uh, uh, she criticized and, and, and said that our president should uh, resign. My name is Allison Blanchett. Okay, Allison Blanchett. I think that I think that the lady president uh, uh, of the United States, but that's a different issue. Well, he's a uh, <laughs> seriously, she I believe lost an election. Okay, and she got very few votes, so her. Coming again, and we're supposed to think positive. We're supposed to get something going this year, and I, I, I hope we do, because that's what we're here for. We're here for the people, and I, I think our city manager has done a great job, and I hope that the issue works out. We'll have a police commissioner too, and I. I do have more stuff to say, but uh, due to lack of time and lack of respect. And that's what uh, President Alamo was trying to get for us. Give people respect who come here and stand, who pay taxes, and would like the city to go in a different direction than criticizing. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Hold on, Ms. Fiore. Yeah, just give me one moment. Um, regarding city manager search, I don't think it was, because it was asked twice. The, the acting city manager gave an answer, but let me just clarify so it's quick. The city is bringing in an executive search firm that specializes in finding municipal leaders. Um, I believe they're under contract now. I don't know yet. Oh, okay. 
contract was ready last month. Let's I have to send the contract, a signed, executed contract to go with you. Okay, well anyway, we're bringing in an executive search firm that laid out a very detailed timeline and process for how they will help us find the city manager. Uh, it will be a very structured process that um, should, should yield some very good results in a very defined time. Um, regarding the Corporation Council's separation agreement, I got in touch with the um, governor's, uh, uh, the state comptroller's office, and um, they informed me that the city did in fact provide a copy of that agreement. Um, so I'm not sure where I'm not getting accurate information from, whether it's coming from the city or from the office of the state comptroller. Um, and then finally, regarding the last, there was a comment, I guess, about open meeting laws, and, and I just may as well say it now, because this is something uh, a couple of council members have been talking about. Um, Councilwoman Moore and I are gonna start holding um, open meetings to discuss uh, some city business. Of course, we're gonna invite the other council members to participate. It'll be their decision if they wanna do that. Um, so just keep an eye open for uh, maybe on Facebook for the announcements of when we'll start those um, those meetings so we can interact with the public. Uh, but 
I left a message on your uh, cell phone on Friday. I'll show you my phone. I'll show you my phone. So I don't know what number it is. I would And say. the only one that can authorize the law in the is the president of the government. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Ms. Madeline Topper. I have something to give back to the Good evening and Happy New Year. Senator Reynolds had a version or a vision for Long Beach. I thought that Long Beach had something special. So he built a home with Spanish tile roofs and build various style homes here. Now I have a vision. I think that Long Beach is something special. It has the Atlantic Ocean, the sea breezes. It is thought by many as the healthiest city. I was asked by the city council in 1996 my thoughts about the Superblock, and I told them that this would make a great spa town. There is a spa town in Europe. It's known as Baden Baden. There is no reason why Long Beach couldn't be known as a spa town of America. I am handing out some information to you about Baden Baden. I would suggest that this board look into the feasibility of doing this. Years ago, I remember a large salt water pool at the ocean front. The gentleman who built Granada Towers built it because his wife suffered from asthma. So he bought the house so that he would, she would have a place to enjoy her for last years. Think about what makes this into a spa town. It would do uh, an unbelievable thing for this town, for the people who live here. This would be special because Long Beach is special. Thank you very much. Thank you for this so information. I'd like to look at what I've given you, and uh, we, we would like some input to get back from you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tomlin. That's it for this evening. I'd like to thank everyone for being here, participating and get home safely. Thank you. Thank you.